I have love. It's great to run VR FPS with custom game modes, large player base, but no progression, no unlocks, and a lack of competitive direction. Contractors. It's great to run VR FPS with custom game modes, large player base, but no progression, no unlocks, also a lack of competitive direction besides the occasional tournament. Onward. It's tactical VR FPS, also with no progression, no unlocks, and also has a lack of competitive direction besides the occasional tournament. Population 1. It's a VR FPS, but it's battle royale, so I guess it doesn't really count. Purchase. It's an amazing VR tactical FPS, but it's basically just tagging events like Rainbow Six, so I also guess that doesn't count either. I think you get the point that I'm making here. Four years into the release of the Quest 2 and VR hitting a mainstream audience, we still don't have a Call of Duty comparable VR FPS with the killer direction, cosmetics, unlocks, progression, and a strong competitive environment. You know what I'm gonna say? Until today, because Vale VR is one of those things, thank God it's finally here. No one f***ing cares. Despite Quest sales and VR and NRS being at an all-time high, getting users to care about anything other than Quest game top 10 lists and tier lists is tough. Individual game releases continually struggle on this platform. So many VR titles come and go within a matter of months because the developers are forced to move on to another title in an attempt to continue to fund their studio. This results in recycled, depthless content continually being hyped, released, and then forgotten. Recently, we've had a release of two incredible VR titles with Rocket Club and Underdogs, but getting anyone to care is a task you are able to crack besides a couple of exceptions. The same may be true of the game that I'm about to talk about, and I might be wasting my time even making this video, but I think it is worth your time. Uh, and also because tripping off the beat kind of dripping off the meat grinder. He to be clear, I was gonna talk about this game regardless of if they gave me money or not. The team behind Vale are some of the coolest people I've ever spoken to and have gone to some insane lengths to get this game where it is today. I've waited a full year for this game to release on Quest, and it's shipping with features that so many VR FPS titles lack completely. But my super is engine decided to play a really cute prank on me by shutting its thermostat permanently closed, causing the engine to go And the Veil team are very cool, sexy, fluorine yanks that said they would fund this entire video and the fixing of my engine. So take that as you will. I'm a mama boyfriend, I'm a little husband. This is the team behind Veil VR. They're a group of aforementioned Floridian men and women with a propensity to go prematurely bald. Though what separates their hairline from Zuckerberg's is their content, their game, and in this case, Veil is built out of a layer of honest love. Like many VR players, despite the flood of undercooked VR FPS titles, those of us into VR shooters still feel that there's a lack of any cohesion. There's no one clear VR FPS title doing everything well. There's a lot of VR FPS titles doing some things well. Population 1 does Battle Royale very well. Contractors does Gunplay well. Pavlov does Community Content well. But like Mark Zuckerberg's only fans, there is a gaping hole. <laughs> I cannot say that. There's a gaping hole in the market for a VR FPS that can support continual live service content content similar to the Call of Duty of old. I say of old because let's be honest, the new Modern Warfare 3 is an unhinged pile of corporate battle pass ridden live service life suck greed. Classic level progression. A clear unlock system, earnable cosmetics. When was the last time you ever heard earnable cosmetics? Paired with silky smooth gunplay, classic FPS demos like TDM, hard point, snipers and knives only modes, a CSGO style bomb defusal game mode which lends itself to competitive tournaments. You get where I'm going here. These people paired with these core FPS tenants make me very biased. I I desperately want this game to perform well because I'm tired of the current VR release trend that promotes essentially one and done disposable VR games. Veil vale is not that, or at least I hope it's not. Future game here, I was so busy yapping about Veil vale that I forgot to join my Discord at discord.gg forward slash get up to be verbally abused. Also, uh, like the video if you like it and sub subscribe. And Veil vale is giving away a custom VR ready gaming PC with a 4090 in it, five merch packages, and 10. 10 quest flurries so if you'd like to enter the giveaway go to this link uh also go down into this description there's also a hidden code in this video that you can find that will give you extra enemies it will be hidden on someone's bald forehead also you can get the game for cheaper if you use my link in the description and uh, uh that's it this is a controversial topic. In the previously listed games such as Contractors, whenever a player cries out for the inclusion of any sort of progression system, they're commonly met with a condescending barrage of users who believe there is no need for one. As unfortunately, I think the majority of live service games have turned traditional progression systems into grind systems, tick box systems, contract systems, or more bluntly, mindless sad attempts at promoting addictive behavior. So naturally, when someone brings up the addition of any sort of progression system, they're met with fury. And I think a lot of developers may fear even attempting any sort of 
progression system due to this potential backlash. Unfortunately, the total lack of any progression system in many of these games leaves a lot to be desired as your performance in games leads to literally nothing besides progression your own skill. Skill that doesn't contribute to anything other than the initial fun factor that comes with stomping other players. It causes so many of these VR FPS titles and VR titles in general to feel completely vapid. And this is something that the developers of Veil are acutely aware of. In fact, they actually modeled their progression system after the original Modern Warfare 2. It's straightforward, classic FPS progression that in this new age of battle pass live service hell, I haven't experienced for a long time and it's deeply refreshing. Your kills and your performance in games is added up at the end of each match with a gorgeously slick and satisfying animated menu. The XP increases your overall level along with unlocking you new weapons, gun sights, and currency. Currency that will eventually be able to be used in a marketplace so you can actually earn your cosmetics. Not only does this make cleaning house and games just deeply satisfying as you know you'll be rewarded with bounds of XP by the end screen but it also organically opens up the game to you weapon by weapon allowing you to get a grips with each gun and sight as you unlock them rather than everything being unlocked at once and being overwhelmed with the list of options. To be clear I think that this works well in Pavlov as it's clearly mimicking CSGO's weapon wheel and it's a very clear iconography of different weapons and the handling is so different that I feel like you can have all of those unlocked from the beginning and it's not a big deal especially with the way that each game is structured but in Veil with their more specific weapons it really helps to give you a clear path to learn each gun and their recoil patterns and this brings me on to being that the development team is a bunch of Floridian based Yanks, the team has put a loving amount of effort into each gun. In fact, I've never seen this level of attention to weapon detail from any other VR FPS title. This is footage that I got from the developers at gun ranges, toying with airsoft guns and testing the sights, something that they do regularly to nail the feel of each weapon. One of the technical artists actually has a PhD related to optics and designs all of the sights and scopes. I didn't even know that was a thing, but like, okay bro, who, who asked? There's a fully built gun range with aim trainers and mini games in the main hub area and as soon as you fire any of these guns you'll get just how well realized these weapons are specifically in their sound design though admittedly i've yet to shoot anything that comes close to the satisfaction of the 50 cal and pavlov but that in fairness is a cartoonishly high bar to hit each gun has its own recoil pattern that can be mastered and controlled the game also has one of the best virtual stock systems i've ever used For those out of the loop you're probably familiar with realizing that you may have undiagnosed parkinson's every time you aim down the sights in a vr game most games now have good motion smoothing to prevent this, but Veil has the option of a virtual stock that does exactly what it sounds like. It emulates a gun stock by smoothing out your motion and allowing the gun to sit against your shoulder accurately as if you had a stock. In fairness, I think more and more FPS titles have implemented this feature, but I think Veil's is one of the best and one of the most consistent. I don't feel like I need to use a gun stock while playing, nor do I feel like I'm at a major disadvantage for not using one. The guns all have their own unique reloads that in some cases you actually have to learn in the gun range like this shotgun that if you have the handle pulled back it covers the slot that you actually put the rounds into so you have to slide it forward again and then load the gun again and then pump the shotgun and you're good to go you can even pump the shotgun one-handed the game doesn't baby you with simplified reloads and mastering a fast reload is actually a skill that can be the difference between life and death in a competitive scenario it also goes a long way to make these guns feel real something that most vr fps titles lack completely the skins are awesome, especially these sick faded splatter style gloves. They look so cool and I love looking at them. I think Veil is one of the first VR games that actually like leverages customizing the one thing that you see the most, your own hands. Though there's no mirror in the game to see your other cosmetics, which I think is a little ridiculous and I was told is something that will eventually come. You can't even see the skins on the customization screen when scrolling through them, though you can for the weapon skins, which by the way looks amazing. The menus here work flawlessly and it is easily some of the best UI I've ever seen in the VR game. <laughs> I wish the kills were more satisfying. Right now, like every other VR FPS, the kills are relegated to just the kill feed, which while useful to see who's killing who, I wish the game would have some sort of satisfying kill confirmed animation like you have in Battlefield and Call of Duty titles that shows the XP you just racked up. A lot of what makes a kill satisfying in those games is the sound effects and that animation. Or if the quest hardware will allow it, a coin disintegration death animation like in the finals would be absolutely sick. I appreciate that that is an unbelievably difficult thing to achieve, especially on native VR hardware 
word, but I'm asking for it anyway because I am a f***ing child. The TTK is very fast, so fast that you consistently die due to players who got the drop on you rather than just accuracy and immediate skill. I don't deny that positioning skill is a huge part of any FPS, but when so many firefights boil down to just whoever shot first, there's a lot of drama that's lost between fights. Because of the fast TTK, even if you're an objectively better player, fighting more than one player at a time is near impossible to come out of alive unless you land all headshots. I also continually trade kills with other players because of this fast TTK. This is all negated a bit by the headshots being pretty easy to land and being one shot kills. So there is some real incentive to train your aim using that aim trainer to land consistent headshots. Right now there's no friend system or party system in place. The developers have stated that they're adding this as their first update one week after launch. The maps are although functionally quite good are visually pretty dead. Vale has some very interesting lore and art direction so I want to see that leveraged in the level design. Also originally being a PC VR game a lot of the textures seem to have just been downgraded for quest rather than simplified and reworked. I think having separate quest specific textures that use more simplistic detailing rather than just lower res detailing goes a long way in keeping games from looking muddy on quest which in a lot of areas particularly rock formations in the lobby fail does. I feel a lot of the game's current style is based upon the developer's real life Miami offices which is really cool and there's even a nod to a cat that's local to their real life offices present in the game lobby so given some of the neon lighting that's in their real life offices I think throwing up some even basic neon lights in each map could be an incredibly easy way to add some soul depth and distinction to Veil. Vale. Right now each map screams generic shooter which is the opposite of what a game like Veil vale should be especially when both teams are so distinct in their black and white gear switching some of the current dull white office like lighting already present in a lot of the maps over to various different neon colors would be an easy way to add some needed contrast while maintaining and adding to the game's visual identity. I also think Bungie's new game Marathon from the revealed trailer alone would be a great example to draw from. I mean, look at how sick this looks. It's simplistic enough to translate well to Quest Hardware as well. Come on, guys. Beautiful big titty, but naked women just don't fall up the sky, you know. Besides my complaints, this is my favorite VR FPS. The game is good. The game is fun. These people deserve your money. It's $30 and it's out right now. Please support this man. He's worked very hard on this game. Please support this team. They've worked tirelessly and are incredibly talented. Please support this. Okay, you don't have to support this bloke. I met him at a VR event in Sweden and he wouldn't stop eating glizzies. I